Oh, it's so 
Ah, good morning. Oh, welcome to worship here at Zion. How are you all this morning? Yes? Isn't it gorgeous out? What a beautiful morning. We're so glad you're here. It's a beautiful morning for a number of reasons. One, always our music. Thank you for sharing your gifts. Oh, absolutely. And in just a while, the children's choir is going to join our worship team. It's wonderful, so thank you. And the other reason is we get to share baptism with two little ones this morning, which is always such a joy. And we welcome the hi. You're already talking with us. That's good. Uh, we welcome those of you who are here especially for that as we take part in this holy sacrament. Today is the third Sunday in Easter, and there are actually 50 days of Easter, so a long time of our alleluias together. In our gospel reading for this morning, we will hear about one of the appearances of Jesus after he has been resurrected. There are 12 of those appearances recorded in Scripture, and so we focus on another one this morning as we did a different one uh, last Sunday. I hope and pray that your time here this morning is a time of refreshment, of being renewed, and a time of peace as well. And having said peace, let me say I share the peace of our Lord with you, and I invite you to please stand. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Thanks. Let's share that peace with one another. The Lord hears us when we call. Come, let us put our trust in God. The Lord fills our hearts with gladness. Come, let us sing God's praises with shouts of joy. The Lord grants peace to our weary souls. Come, let us rest by the quiet waters of God's grace. God invites us to the quiet waters of grace and offers forgiveness as we repent. To repent is to turn away from sin and turn towards Christ Jesus. Scripture promises that when we confess our sinfulness, God hears our cry and wipes away our sin. Trusting in God's promise of new life, let us confess our sins. Risen Christ, you reveal yourself to us again and again that we might come to know you. Forgive us when our fear keeps us stuck, when our misconceptions prevent us from loving all creation as you call us to do. Help us to accept the peace you so graciously offer to us. Have mercy on us when we hoard or hide your grace and when we fail to offer it to others. Renew us and make us whole so that in this world of strife we may be bearers of your peace and hope. Amen. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God and that is what we are. We are beloved children of God. We are claimed by God, forgiven of our sins, and set free for love, grace, and hope. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Amen. Thanks be to God.
born in the water is fine. Stealing in the river of life. Come as you are, no time to waste. Open your heart, don't be afraid. Jump on in the water is fine. There's healing in the river of life. Brothers, sisters, come on down to that river. Guaranteed you'll never be the same. Whoa. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And now we pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. And I'll invite the children to please join me up front here. If you'll come on up and sit on the carpet here. Good morning. Good morning. Have you sit right there. Good job. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Nice singing over there, by the way. Thanks for doing that. So you probably heard me at the very beginning, and I said that Easter lasts for 50 days, five zero days. That's a long, long time. That's over a month of us being able to celebrate Easter. You might think it's over, but it's not over yet. We get a long time to celebrate that Jesus is risen and he's alive and he's with us. And the story today that we're focusing on has a word that starts with W, 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 right? And, um, oh, just, just one second here. Um... Oh, good. Needed to get that done, right? Okay. Um, so, you see this? Yeah. Um, who wrote that? How do, you know, how do you know that it was me who wrote this? I'm not there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. You just saw me, right? You just... And I, you're right. You're right, I took the cap of the pen off so you knew that I was using this pen because you saw it with your own very eyes. And in the Bible, after Jesus was raised from the dead, he appeared 12 different times, sometimes to one person, sometimes to as many as 500 people. And they saw the risen Lord with their own eyes. That's being a witness. When you see something with your own eyes, that's being a witness. But there's a second part to being a witness. You can't just see it and then never say anything about it ever again. A witness sees something with their own eyes and then they tell other people. So the people who saw Jesus alive, they witnessed that and then what did they do? They told some other people and then they told some other people and more people and more people and then some of the people who heard about the witness wrote it down. And that's how we get the Bible. 
in the part of what we call the Gospels that tell the story of those people who witnessed what Jesus did. And so that's why we have that, because they saw it and they told about it. And that's what we're supposed to do too. We are supposed to witness or tell other people about Jesus and the ways that we see Jesus in our lives. That's being witnesses. It's that simple. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, so many people witnessed you alive after you were raised from the dead. Thank you for their witness. Help us to see you in our lives and tell others about it. And together we all pray, amen. Now Kristen will help you guys know where to go. Together, God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism, by water and the word that God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of of the world. Parents and sponsors, as you bring Raylan and Jaybird to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with them among God's faithful people, to bring them to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in their very tiny little hands the Holy <laughs> Scriptures and nurture them in faith and prayer so that they may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world that God has made, and to work for justice and for peace. And so I ask you, do you promise to help Raylan and to help Jay Bird grow in the Christian faith? Parents and sponsors, if you do, please say, I do. I do. Great, great start. <laughs> People of God, you didn't get out of this. This is a group effort. Do you promise to support them and pray for them in their new life in Christ? If so, please say, we do. We do. And as we gather together as witnesses to our faith, to these two little ones, we speak the faith for them this morning. And so I'm going to invite you, congregation, to please stand as you are able. And before we make that profession of faith, we talk about what we turn away from. And so I ask you, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against our God? And do you renounce the ways of sin that draw us away from our God? If so, will you all please respond, I renounce them. I, I renounce, renounce them. them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And I invite you to please be seated. All right, if you want to bring Raylan over and just kind of hold her under the water. All right, Carter, you want to come and see this? It's really cool. All right, you ready? Raylan, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There you go. You did such a good job. Got it. Hey, I'm Jaybird. Hey, sweetie. Jaybird, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, he gave us a little smile. Oh. <laughs> Amen. Let us pray together. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Amen. So if you want to all gather around, Raylan, gather if you want to around, gather around Jaybird, place your hand on say Jay. a word of blessing for her. Yeah. Dear Lord, sustain Raylan and Jaybird with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so Raylan... Ready? Child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with this cross of Christ forever. Let your light so shine before all people that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. And Shabird, child of God, turn this way just a little. There we go. Shabird, child of God. You have been marked with the cross of Christ and sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit forever. Jaybird, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Ooh, that's fun. That is funky, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I will now have a member from our church council come forward now. The cross of Christ is an important symbol. On behalf of the congregation, we give you this handmade wooden cross as a remembrance of three things, of, the day, of this day of baptism and of Christ's command, take up your cross and follow me. Thank you. So I invite you to please join me in welcoming Ray Lynn and Jaybird and God's family and into your Zion family first with our words and then we'll clap. And so we join in this welcoming blessing. We welcome, welcome you, Jaybird Jay and Raylan, beloved, beloved children of God, into the body of Christ and into the mission we share, to share Christ's word, strengthen faith, and serve those in need. Amen. And thanks to God. You did it. You did such a good job. Yeah. Wonderful. Congratulations and thanks. Thank you guys so much. Way to go, Carter. Awesome. The first reading is a reading from Acts. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus 
whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witness. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read Psalm number four with me. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? You know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when rain and wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me rest secure. I invite you to please stand as you are able. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when Jesus had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated.
This might sound familiar to those of you, especially if you have college kids coming home or kids who have been in the service coming home or you know, just when your middle schoolers come home after a day at school or hopefully a Wednesday night here, they walk in and often one of the first phrases out of their mouths is, is there anything to eat? Right? Yeah. Is there anything to eat? And that's what Jesus says to these disciples. Do you have anything here to eat? And the answer to that is a tangible touchable, seeable way for us to see Jesus enter into these disciples' lives as he enters into our lives as well. And did you notice that sentence in the gospel where it says that they have joy, but within their joy, they're disbelieving. So they have both this, this emotion of great joy and also this emotion of absolute disbelief. And Jesus says, so what do you have to eat? And they give him broiled fish and they share this meal together. Sharing a meal together is prominent in scriptures through the Old Testament in through the New Testament as well. It's why communion is such an important, important part of our faith journey because that's sharing a meal together. But before they share that meal together, Jesus does a couple other things. First of all, he says to them, peace be with you. He knows of their fear and their disbelief. Now, if that sounds really familiar to you, that means you were here last week. Because last week we also read one of the 12 accounts that are recorded of Jesus appearing after he has been risen from the dead. And in the same way, he said, peace be with you. As I told the kids, Jesus appeared to people in groups, sometimes just one person, but mostly in groups and all the way up to 500 people. So first, he waylays their fears and says, peace be with you. And then he tangibly says, look at my hands, look at my feet, see it's me. And then he eats, which is another tangible way of saying, see it's me, flesh blood and bones. I am here before you. I am the risen Lord. All of that is true, but there's another piece in this appearance story that is so beautiful, and I wonder how often we think of it, and that's this. After he, you know, settles down their fears, and after he gives them tangible evidence that it's really him, the other thing that he does in that room as he appears to them, well, think of it this way. Jesus could have walked into that room after being risen from the dead, and as he sees his disciples, his friends who were supposed to be with him throughout everything, he could have said to them, where were you? He could have said, you abandoned me, you denied who I was, you denied ever knowing me, and you were my friend, where were you? And he could have recounted every last thing that they had done, every last brokenness within them as witnesses and as disciples of our Lord. But Jesus does not do that. Instead, there's this beautiful, beautiful telling of forgiveness. He doesn't recount all those things. He just says, peace be with you, and he is with them. C.S. Lewis has a famous saying about forgiveness. He says that we all love the idea of forgiveness, all of us, until, <laughs> until we have someone we know we need to forgive. Then we are not so much fans of it, because it's hard sometimes to forgive. We know we're supposed to do it. We know that as people who follow Jesus, we are to bring forgiveness into this world. We pray about it. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But just like any other prayer, when we pray that prayer about forgiveness, we have to put feet to our prayer. We have to put feet to our prayer. And what that means is, we have to go and do it. We've asked 
for help in doing it when we pray that prayer. But then we have to go out and actually do the forgiving. Jan Richardson is a poet and I would argue a theologian. Um, she writes about faith. She has a beautiful, short, tiny little three, three lines, I think it is, poem about this uh, story in which she says, uh, embodied in, in blood and flesh among those disciples is both joy and being absolute terrified. Both things were there. Another poem that she writes is about forgiveness. And I think she is the best way of describing forgiveness. So this is Jan Richardson. If you haven't read her work, I encourage you to Google her and just read a couple of her poems uh, because they're so real about faith. And so she calls forgiveness, or having to forgive someone and being forgiveness, the hardest blessing the hardest blessing. And that is so true. It's difficult for us to do, and yet when we forgive, we are blessed. Our heart is released from anger. Our heart is released from holding on to our hurt. And the person we forgive is released as well. And in that, that release, something else happens. And this is what happened for the disciples when Jesus was eating with them and, and gave them that forgiveness, gave them that reconciliation. The other thing that happens when we forgive is we transform that relationship and we give a new purpose. So, as I said, Jesus could have said to those disciples, where were you? And instead, he decided that the relationship he had with them was more important than all of that. And by reconciling with them and sitting and eating with them, he gave them a new purpose in their lives. And that happens for us, too, when we forgive. So this story, and in fact, I would argue all of the appearance stories of Jesus after he has been raised, <clears throat> excuse me, are stories of tangible, like, like you can just see, you can see the forgiveness happening as they're sitting there and eating together. That's what happens when we have communion. When we have communion, it is a tangible, touchable, seeable, tasteable evidence of reconciliation and forgiveness. It's why we say peace be with you before we have communion is a way of saying reconciliation is important. People and relationships are important. Richard Rohr is a, also a theologian, and this is what he says about forgiveness. He says, every time, every time that God forgives us, it is evidence that God puts relationships above even God's rules. Every time God forgives us, it is evidence that God puts relationship above even God's rules. And that's what Jesus was doing there that day. That's what Jesus does every day for us. You've heard me say it before here at Zion, and we practice this at Zion. We're not perfect at it, but we practice it. We say relationship, people before things, always. It seems that that is what God says to you and me when he reconciles, when he forgives us. Relationship is of the highest order. Now, when I talk about forgiveness and reconciliation, it's always important to say uh, that the church over the years and over and through its history uh, has not always done a wonderful job of teaching about forgiveness in real life. Uh, for example, pastors and priests over time have said to victims of abuse, forgive, forget, and stay. We should never have taught that. And that is a teaching that the church repents from. 
Because before there can be that forgiveness, there has to be safety and security. And even then, that forgiveness comes after a lot of work. And so it's important to say that when we talk about forgiveness. So this forgiveness as the most difficult blessing is one that permeates our lives and our relationships with one another. I think when I first came to Zion uh, as your interim, I said to you, um, we're in relationship together. We're going we're gonna to do God's mission together, and it's going to be messy as all get out. I am going to make mistakes. I'm a broken person. I'm going to disappoint you, and vice versa, because that's what happens in true, authentic relationships. Sometimes, in our brokenness, we hurt one another. And in forgiveness, we release that hurt. One of my favorite professors at seminary always said it this way, forgiveness is giving up the goods, handing over the goods. And what he meant by that is, when you forgive someone, you're handing over the goods. You're handing over your right to go fishing for that sin again or that hurt again. You're giving up the goods. You are giving up your right to kind of hold that over someone. And the really amazing thing about forgiveness is this. We have no chance in doing it. No chance in doing it. Except that Jesus has already given up the goods to you, to me. He's already done that to show us how to go about doing that. So I hope maybe as we think about this story of Jesus coming and eating that broiled fish and being with those disciples, whom he could have said, hey, you guys failed miserably. Instead, he said, come, let's eat together. I hope it gives you a little bit of a chance to think about forgiveness. And I want to close today with this poem by Jan Richardson, and it's called The Hardest Blessing. And guess what? It's about forgiveness. <laughs> so here it goes. If, if we cannot lay aside the wound, then let us say it will not always bind us. Let us say that the damage will not eternally determine our path. Let us say the line of our life will not always travel along the places where someone else has trespassed, trespassed against us. Let us say that the line of our life will not always travel along the places where we are torn and hurt. Let us say that forgiveness can take some practice, can take some patience, can take a long, struggling time. Let us say that to offer the hardest of blessings, we will need the deepest of grace. Let us say that the wound we feel will not be our final home. Instead, let us find that through the wound, there runs a road. Now, it's not the road we may have chosen, but on the way, may we finally see that in forgiveness, once it is practiced, it comes also toward us, and then it shines with a joy that is well-deserved for our living. And she writes this in her book called The Cure for Sorrow. And so she argues that one cure for our sorrow, our brokenness, and our hurt is that path of forgiveness and into forgiveness. So may you be empowered by the resurrected Christ to embody this transformative power of forgiveness. Because this is the cure. This is the cure for our brokenness, for our hurts, for our broken world, is to offer forgiveness over and over again for ourselves, and for others, so that this world may indeed reflect the abundance of life that Jesus came for. Amen, and thanks be to God.
As we now collect the offering, I invite our ushers down. We are joined in this effort of offering grace and reconciliation to the whole world. And so thank you for the gifts of this offering of your time, your talents, and your tithe, as we do indeed join together as one collective effort to really make this world as reconciled as it can be. And so let us join together with this offering of music. in one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. 
rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and those in need of good news. Resurrected Christ, as we are called to witness to your story of grace and redemption, make us alive to all of the needs of the world. Inspire us to bear witness to you that through the Holy Spirit we would be a church that loves one another and loves you in ways both seen and unseen. God of grace, hear our prayer. Global Christ, as you continue to greet your disciples of old and your disciples of today with peace, may we also greet the world with peace, following your invitation to touch and see, to make your saving grace, your salvation, your liberation from all sin and evil, something that we can indeed touch and see. Take all of our fears of conflict, all of our despair, and all of our mourning and resurrect it into action that makes the world a more peaceful place, which we can only do through your power and our togetherness. God of grace, hear our prayer. Compassionate Christ, you experienced suffering on this earth and so empathize with us in our suffering. Joined together as your body, we lift these names in prayer for Jessa Faden and Hunter Odell, for Jeanette as she begins a new financial peace journey, for the Lundstedt family with a new baby, for Ken Ogden, for Peyton Phillips, Tim Bob Borningham, Tim Anderson, for Sophia Wright, for Kurt Faden, for Rich Tyrell. Lord, make your presence known to those mourning the dead, especially for the family and friends of Larry Houston at his death, and for the family and friends of Sharon Johnson at her death. Be gracious, O God. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Gathered into one body by this Holy Spirit who loves us all, let us pray the prayer that Jesus once taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Wonderful it has been to be here at worship with you. Thank you for being here. I hope it will be a blessing into your week. Guess what? One announcement today. That does not happen very often. We have Serve Weekend coming up April 26th through the 28th. It's the last part of that whole week. And uh, this is a way of us collectively saying, come and be connected here and connected to the mission of serving. Do you know that it takes 24 people on a Sunday morning to volunteer? And that's on a non-communion Sunday morning, 24 people to make this happen. Uh, so we are encouraging you to use the QR code. You're going to get one passed out, or maybe you got it on your way in. Uh, and then there is the QR code is also at the info desk. So please look at that, see where you might dive in and serve together. And having said that, I'll invite you to stand. My dear friends in Christ, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And join together with all we are and all we do. We will trust, trust in Christ, Christ, live for Christ, and serve with Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, and hallelujah. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hallelujah. You fall so far, you should be ashamed of yourself. So I was ashamed of myself. The lies I believed, they got some roots to run deep. I let them take a hold of my life, I let them take control of my life. Standing in your presence, Lord, I can feel you digging all my roots up. I hear you healing all my wounds up. All I can say is hallelujah, look what you've done, look what you've done in me. You spoke your truth into the lies I let my heart believe. Look at me now, look how you made me new. Oh, the enemy did everything that he could do. Oh, but look what you've done. Lord, I can feel you digging all my roots.